The important thing to remember is this is a major police inquiry. We have put all the resources we need into it. And it's also important to remember that the people responsible for this not only d deliberately and determinedly drove an attack home on members of the British Ministry establishment, they also equally, with equal determination, tried to kill ordinary members of that community at the same time. And I think we should reflect on that. There were warning signs that such an attack was imminent. Last year, a police patrol escaped injury in a landmine attack in Rosleigh, while in January, a large car bomb was discovered in Castle Wellen. Last week, MI5 raised the threat level here, prompting the Chief Constable to request assistance from the Special Reconnaissance Service. Nationalist policing board members reacted angrily to not being advised, but ultimately, last night's attack seems to have vindicated Sir Hugh's request. Well, I think I retain the right, like any chief constable, to use the resources I need to keep Northern Ireland safe. What we have here is no different to any other part of the United Kingdom. And I do think if people want a normal policing service here, then they must expect a normal police response. What I am doing is what I am determined to do, which is to keep Northern Ireland as safe as I possibly can using the resources I have the right to call on. But the Chief Constable was quick to say there would be no return to Operation Banner on his watch. And he has no intention of using military intelligence any more than is necessary. If people want us to live in a police state where I can introduce draconian powers to keep everything under wraps, then so be it. That's not how we want to live. And indeed, it's not how people in Northern Ireland want to live. We police in keeping, strictly in keeping of the law, the rule of law and the Human Rights Act. And I will continue to do that. And we will continue to... Uh, run operations so we can disrupt activity and arrest people. Colin McAlinden, UTV Live. Well, to other news now, there's an ongoing security alert at Scarva near the main Dublin to Belfast railway line. The Army Bomb Squad is at the scene. Now, tomorrow, UTV Live will have further coverage of these latest killings at Mass Serene and there'll be a news special tomorrow night at half past ten on UTV. Do join us for that. The local weather is coming up next from everyone in the newsroom on this Sunday evening. A very good evening to you. An isolated outrage or back to the bad old days. The Prime Minister insists the murders of two soldiers outside of barracks will not shatter the peace in Northern Ireland. No murderer will be able to derail a peace process that is the sport of the vast majority of the people of Northern Ireland. Sinn Féin's Gerry Adams says the killings were an attack on the peace process, but those behind them had no support and no strategy. In the last hour, a dissident Republican group says it carried out the murders. Also this evening, arrested, eventually, the environmental campaigner who threw green custard over Peter Mandelson two days ago and Arsenal in cruise control to guarantee both FA Cup semis will be all Premiership affairs. Good evening. The Prime Minister has insisted the evil murders of two young soldiers in Northern Ireland will not bring down the peace process there. The two men, who were both in their early 20s, were about to be sent to Afghanistan. Four other people were also injured when gunmen fired shots outside Masarine barracks in Antrim last night. One of them remains in a critical condition. Police describe it as a highly planned attack by a gang with mass murder in their sights. A dissident Republican group has said it carried out the killings. Our UK editor, Angus Walker, is in Antrim tonight. Angus. Yeah, shock here in Northern Ireland, but no surprise that the real IRA has carried out an attack. The threat from renegade Republicans has been increasing in recent weeks and months. There's been clear intent and also clear intelligence that an attack would take place. The worst fears of the security forces have come true. It was about half past nine last night when the four soldiers wearing desert fatigues hours from being deployed to Afghanistan were taking delivery of pizzas by the main gate of their barracks in Antrim. Two soldiers were killed by automatic gunfire, two deliverymen injured in a drive-by shooting being blamed on dissident Republicans. I heard three gunshots constantly, then it stopped, then there was another two after it. This photograph clearly shows a bullet hole in the back of one of the cars driven by the pizza deliveryman. 
Recovered bullets will be vital clues in the forensic investigation. The attack must have been filmed by some of the many CCTV cameras around the military base. The suspected getaway car has been found five miles away near the M2 motorway. My understanding is that the police and MI5 believe this attack would have taken some time to plan, probably organised before the security service raised the threat level here in Northern Ireland from substantial to severe just over a week ago. And last week there was a political row when the Northern Ireland police chief, Hugh Ward, admitted that special forces soldiers had been deployed to back up police surveillance operations aimed at disrupting hardline Republicans. Well, of course, it's a very sad day for Northern Ireland and our particular thoughts are with the families of those killed and indeed injured. I think the important thing to remember is this is a major police inquiry. We have put all the resources we need into it. Recently, attacks by dissidents have intensified. Three weeks ago, a 300-pound car bomb was diffused. According to the police, splinter groups have been competing to see who can be the first to kill a member of the security forces. This dissident propaganda video shows masked men with automatic weapons. Many were stolen from IRA arms dumps before decommissioning, part of the peace process. I think the whole country is shocked and outraged at the evil and cowardly attacks on British soldiers who were serving the country. And for the first time, the Sinn Féin leadership is calling for the killers of the British soldiers to be caught by the police. I think there is a duty and a responsibility on everyone to ensure that we all work together to send a very clear message that not only are we opposed to their activities, but that we're actually going to work together to see the apprehension of those who will try to uh, fly in the face of the democratically expressed wishes of the people of Ireland. Well, the real IRA has issued this statement uh, warning there could be more attacks. So the real fear here in Northern Ireland is we could see more attacks. We are talking about dozens of people, not hundreds of people in the ranks of the dissident Republicans. But we can see from the number of rounds that were fired at the gates, we've been down there and counted up to 50 bullets were fired. These are a small number of people, but they're very dangerous individual. And of course, the dreadful uh, thought is that these men were about to be deployed to Afghanistan. These soldiers would have been thinking about the dangers they were going to face in Helmand. Uh, not thinking about the danger of being ambushed in Antrim. Angus Walker, in Antrim, thank you very much. One local councillor said the attack took Northern Ireland back to the bad old days, but most leading politicians have insisted it will not shatter the peace that's held for more than a decade. Phil Ray-Smith reports now on how far the province has come and what lasting impact, if any, last night's murders will have. They were once the bitterest of enemies. And yet, two years ago, Ian Paisley and Martin McGuinness shared a joke as Northern Ireland's new power-sharing executive was sworn in. If these two men could bridge the political divide, the hope was the whole province could find peace. The last British soldier to die in Northern Ireland was bombardier Stephen Resterick, killed by an IRA sniper in 1997. That is, the last until last night. It will certainly send shockwaves through the army because Northern Ireland is no longer considered to be an operational theatre. Indeed, the soldiers there are placed into Northern Ireland just like the rest of the United Kingdom. Witness the fact that so many soldiers from Northern Ireland are deployed to real operational theatres like Iraq and Afghanistan. The last major incident carried out by dissident Republicans was the Omer bombing of 1998. If dissidents are proved to be behind last night's attack, does it now herald a renewed campaign of terror? It does represent a significant new chapter that we do have a violent Republican group uh, alive and well and operating in Northern Ireland and capable of carrying out such killings. But this is not anything to do with the overthrow of the Good Friday Agreement, the overthrow of Stormont. This is a tiny, impoverished, relatively powerless group. There will be no return to the days of British soldiers securing Northern Ireland's streets. That much was made clear today. But last night proves there are some in the province with the desire and the ability to carry out attacks. The challenge for the men now leading Northern Ireland is to ensure the Antrim attack is a one-off. Phil Ray-Smith, ITV News.
In other news tonight, a climate change protester who threw green custard over...